Get ready, because we're gonna talk about Specialized Turbo Levo SL e-bike. I've had this bike for about three weeks now. It's a expert build, and I've gotta ride it on everything from 11 mile hard pack rippers to 30 mile Tahoe loose. I have tried it in every setting it has available across multiple rides. I took it on steep, loose trails, and I rode it on every other kind of trail I could find that was available to ride. I have a pretty good idea of how this bike rides, and by the end of this video, I hope I can describe to you how the bike rides, where the bike shines, what's not awesome, and who's this bike for. So, first thing I'm gonna do is run through the specs and a couple of changes I made just so that it, it fit me for a demo. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna peek down here a little bit. Okay, so I'm 5'8", I rode a medium. One of the changes I did make was a 50 mil stem. I think if I were a little taller, I definitely want a large. I want to try a large. I'm sort of torn there. I like a little bit of reach, but I'm not sure it's a good idea on this bike, so that's why I want to try it. This has a 320 watt hour battery. That equates to about, in my opinion, three, three and a half hours of trail use if you're not full turbo, um, if you're mixing eco and trail, and then probably an hour and a half of full turbo pushing the bike pretty hard. Um, maybe not an hour and a half. That's, I never ran it all the way out, but I definitely pushed it pretty far, so it had been somewhere close to that in full turbo, real hard push the whole time. Fact 11 carbon. Uh, they all are, whether it's a comp carbon, an expert carbon, a Swerks carbon, they're the same weight, same motor, same carbon, same, same, same. So just know that going in, um, that the, what you're buying is components uh, at model, not carbon weight and some things that you get in a traditional uh, specialized bike. The bike comes with the 48 volt charger. Um, from about empty, it's two and a half or three hours to fully charge the bike, and then from about half hour, hour and a half, depending on where you are on the half side. Uh, so if you wanted to do laps on the bike, you could, um, you know, go out and smash hard and then take a break. You're gonna need a couple hours to charge it. So if you wanna do back-to-backers and jump on a shuttle, not the greatest bike, but if you got time, perfect bike. Um, it's, got three, it's got three modes. You've got Eco Trail and Turbo. Uh, Turbo's a lot of fun. Um, I, I called it party mode most of the time I had it. Not because it goes really fast on steeps, we'll get into that, but because it gives you enough extra speed that if you're on slide inclines and there's a rock, you might be able to jump this bike. I'm just saying, it's a lot of fun that way. This bike's like 42 pounds with the pedals on. Uh, it's got a 165 crank. Again, it came with a 40 mil stem and 780 bars. Um, I, know my, I know my cockpit, you should know yours. Um, I'm, a I'm 765 bars on every bike I have, uh, and I'm a 50 mil stem on most bikes. Um, that just tends to, from a ride and how bikes are to fit me really well, uh, and, and so that works pretty good. The seat post, uh, the dropper is 150 mil, it's a Manic Fusion. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of the dropper, it worked, I'm just not a big fan of it. Uh, it felt like if you put any odd pressure on it, it struggled to move. Um, and Specialized has an interrupted seat post, so it has this kind of, well, you can't see it there, but it has this hook in it. So you don't have a real deep insertion depth. I have a lot of posts sticking out above the frame and I would like to have more dropper and get that seat even further out of the way. That being said, I was able to move around on the bike really well. It's got a pretty low stack height. It's got 435 mil reach uh, or about 17 inches. That's, that's this reach. Um, it's only about 22 inches from the saddle forward, but it's really comfortable to ride. So I don't want to, Normally I like more, a more roomy cockpit, but this bike was so comfortable to sit and spin and ride on because you're so active even going uphill that that became sort of less important. And that was really interesting to learn. The wheelbase is about 46 and 5 eighths inches. So it's a pretty good trail length nowadays. Um, it's not the longest bike out there by any means, but it wasn't short and it didn't have any weird behavior. They do use a 51 mil offset fork to get some of that. 
66 screen head tube or 65 and a half with the flip chip. I rode it in both quite a bit. Um, 13 and three quarter inch bottom bracket height. Um, never, never struck a pedal. Uh, it does ride down in the travel a little bit. You do feel in the bike a little bit. You don't feel way down in it and you don't, but you never fill up on top of it. So, I mean, no complaints there. Um, DT Swiss 360 hubs on Roval aluminum wheels. The wheels were great. They rode great, they had no issues. I never had a single problem, so I wouldn't get too picky about those. I don't even know if I'd change them if I bought this bike. The Code RS brakes worked well. Uh, $10,500, I'd like RSCs, I'd like a little bite point adjustment, but um, considering the frame is eight grand, all you're doing is buying parts after that, so you know they must have had to pinch some pennies somewhere. XL1 rear derailleur, XL1 shifter, GX cassette, uh, 1052, all that works really well. I was rarely up in the 52, I may be one before it, um, except on the steep stuff, and, and I'll get into that. Um, tires, I'm gonna spend a quick second here. I am often really hard on specialized tires. By hard, I mean I don't like them. Uh, but these worked really well. I wouldn't change them if I bought the bike. I'd ride them until they were bald. I don't think they're a top performing tire, and, but I never had any issues with them, and they were super predictable, so I wouldn't, I'd leave them alone. Uh, it's a butcher with the gripped on compound and the uh, um, grid trail casing, and out back is the Eliminator. They're both in a 2.3. They worked really well. This is a 29 inch bike. Uh, if you if uh, you didn't know that or I didn't get into that yet suspension it is a Fox 36 grip 2 performance uh, with a DPX2 performance rear I like performance stuff I think it rides just fine I, I don't bother with changing that out the DPX2 shock um, a little bit wallowy. I, even on this bike, it's wallowy. Actually, on this bike, it's more wallowy in the mid-stroke to me than a, than a lot of times I've ridden a DPX2. I've yet to ride a bike with a DPX2 and walk away thinking that was great suspension in the rear, uh, especially with this, like, this must be a really light compression tune, and this the, um, the leverage from the linkage is pretty regressive feeling. A Cascade Link and the next two might fix this bike and make it a like, legit ripper, but that's for a different rider. I think this bike the way it is is fantastic for a trail bike. So to get into that, it's just a preference that I might change. That's where I'd spend my money and still buy a performance shock. I'm running 260 PSI in the rear, it's a 185 pound rider and 85 PSI in the front. That's a very leveraged shock. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. That's very, very leveraged. And I bottomed that thing out a lot, even then. And when I set it up according to what they wanted, I bottomed it out a whole bunch. So um, those are the details on the bike overall. You, you can go on to Specialized website and if you wanna really dig into the details, but that's my overview of the bike. It is a really nice bike and it's really well put together. Let's talk about how the bike rides. Let's get into the, you know, the, the real meat and potatoes of what you wanna know about this bike. This bike is fast, this bike is fun, this bike is stable, and it has a lot of traction. I was really impressed when the bike was on the ground how well it rode. It flips over and turns really well and really easy. You can lean this bike over a long way and you're really comfortable. That added, all that added weight down low of the motor and everything down in this bike. If they could get the shock down to go with it, oh man, this thing is just the next level, like the Kinevo is. So I think this bike, that is just such a high, it's a traction monster. It just rips when you keep the wheels on the ground. It also is well balanced, so when you come into a corner, you can pump and shove it into the corner and just, you know, keep use your brakes just to check yourself up on the entrance and then pump that bike in and use that bike to come out of that corner fast. It's It did all that really, really well way better than a regular Stumpy, and in my opinion, better than the Stumpy Evo. I think if the Stumpy Evo rode as good as this bike, the Stumpy Evo would be a spectacular bike. I was really impressed with how this bike, its behaviors and characteristics on the trail. It didn't do any funny business. It didn't try to huck a buck you off into the weeds. It, it didn't do anything bad. It, you know, you're, you're braking and everything was pretty stable. Under hard braking, that's when I noticed that sort of offset of fork. I started to feel like under hard braking, like I'd come in too fast and I need to check myself up and I'd go to lean in. The front end had a little bit of head shake because of that, but other than that, that's the only thing that I noticed there. Also, the motor disengages really well. That's something in an e-bike I've noticed I've had to start paying attention to, but you never, it's not an issue on, a, on a, an analog bike. You come into the corner and if you pedal one too many times, that, that delay to disengagement, so you, you come in hot. 
And this bike, because it's a lower powered motor, um, you don't tend to experience that. The other thing, this thing pedals so naturally, you don't have that like that e-bike lungy feeling, not even in turbo. So by being an SL with this, this lower powered motor and all, all this design, this feels very natural. It feels like you're getting on any mountain bike you've ever ridden um, without a motor. It's, except you got some help in there. They did, a, I mean, Specialized has always been good at that. They've been doing this longer than most. And man, that felt fantastic. Some of the other bikes I've ridden, you get on, you flip the pedals, and it's it's like the it's like a dirt bike that somebody goes full throttle on. Your arms are straight, off you go. This never had that experience. You can ride this as hard as you want and never worry about that happening. The wheels didn't have any weird flex. I was actually super impressed again with the aluminum wheels. Um, I thought that you could ride these wheels really hard. You had good compliance. I don't know what the benefit to carbon would be. I'd have to go out and test it. Um, I don't know that there is a huge benefit in that arena on this bike. So that, I thought that was sort of interesting. I will say overall, the frame didn't have any weird flex. The, the horse link suspension works really good in this design. It's very active so you can pump and play and have a really, it's, it does all the things a stump jumper should do um, that they don't do anymore. This is really a good bike, and if I were weighing a Stump Jumper, a Stump Jumper Evo, and a Levo SL, I'd leave with this bike. Hands down of the three, I'd leave with this bike. Why not have the one that is a whole lot more fun every day, that you can ride all the time, that rides just like that mountain bike rides, on an 11 mile loop that I rode this thing on, I cranked it into full turbo. I've ridden that loop probably 150 times. The difference in timing. So if you're curious about that, think about, it's about 30% best I can tell if you're in full turbo. You're about 30% faster than you were on your regular mountain bike. That's about it. So where it, that's something it isn't uh, as a, full powered e-bike, um, as a, a lightweight e-bike, that's about the benefit. So a loop that I was hour 10, hour 12, I was 50, 51 minute. Difference is nine mile an hour average versus about a 13 mile an hour average. And it was almost all in the uphills. I mean, I didn't, um, I was close to all my normal downhill times, all within seconds. All that time was in the climbing because there, I mean, anything that's not steep, this bike just hauls up and goes. But you're never going, you're more active. It's actually a lot more fun. You flow uphill, that's really cool. You're not like flying uphill. And I'd like to get that misnomer about e-bikes out there, especially this one, because it does not do that. Matter of fact, um, we'll talk about what it doesn't do so well, what's not so awesome, and steep climbing. We're gonna talk about that. Where does this bike really shine? As a trail bike. This is a killer trail bike. Everything from a beginner to intermediate to advanced rider is gonna do well on this bike. If you wanna train every day and push hard. On that loop I rode, my average heart rate was 148. I still hit 170. All those things were still true on this bike. I got a hell of a workout out of that. I had 50 minutes and I was just all out as hard as I could ride and it was work. This is a fantastic, trail bike. And I keep saying that because a lot of times I see it classified as an all mountain bike. It is not an all mountain bike, but it is a killer trail bike and it is a lot of fun. It's everything a stumpy should be on the trail and they did a killer job of that. It's really good for 20 to 30 mile rides. Um, you know, this bike is really comfortable to ride. I made that note twice. You can sit and spin, just enjoy your time. It's got no crazy weird characteristics. It handles a lot of things really well. Um, this is a really well-balanced ride. So where's it not awesome? I, I just gave it a lot of praise, right? Well, if it's steep, if it's technical, and if it's really loose, this bike isn't awesome anymore. It isn't terrible. It isn't like you're gonna crash or die or you're gonna have some incredible problem. It just isn't meant for it. You can't ride it as fast because its handling isn't as good. Even when this bike was at 65, it this just isn't, I, I came into what was 55 or 60 degrees steep trail. I dropped off the rock to go in and I knew right away this was just, it started doing like some motion and I was fighting the bike instead of riding the bike. And this just isn't what that bike is for. Um, but as a trail bike, hands down, super amazing. The other thing on really steep climbs, you're gonna find out it's 40 pounds and that it doesn't have a lot of motor. 
you're working hard. It's, uh, I'm not saying you don't have help, because uh, you do, because it's got a motor, but you're geared all the way up into your big ring and you are pedaling hard to get up that hill. You might be faster than the person next to you by a little bit, but you aren't gonna blow their doors off. And if some really fast cross country guy comes up, they might pass you if you're not that fast. The other thing that wasn't awesome, and I, this might just be an e-bike thing, but I don't remember it in a full powered e-bike. I'm coming down and there's a section where you can pedal and just crank 25 plus miles an hour, uh, cause it's downhill about six degrees is all, four degrees or six degrees, and you just crank and hammer. Problem with this is at 20 miles an hour, the motor doesn't cut out. So all of a sudden I'm fighting the resistance of the motor and pedaling as hard as I can. And I'm not as fast as I would have been on my non e-bike. So that wasn't really awesome, but I don't know what that's about. I actually want to call somebody and ask. Maybe I'd come up against that on a full powered one. I just don't know why they don't have a speed sensor that says you've crossed this, you're still pedaling. Let's cut out the resistance. The chain is still connected to the drive. Um, it, it doesn't need to be, they can cut the motor out and you can just go. I, I just don't understand. Um, it's something I'm not sure about. If you know more about that, please leave a comment. Uh, I'd love to know. Uh, one last thing that's not awesome, this bike bottoms out when you jump it. It's just something in the design. Again, I think with a cascade components link, maybe an X2 shock, I could get away from that. Um, get some more compression tune in the bike and a little bit more uh, progressivity out of, the, out of the leverage and the linkage on the bike. Um, but if you're gonna send it, uh, be prepared to bottom it out sometimes. And it just, uh, just sort of seems to be how the bike rides. But it's uh, not all the time, so send it sometimes. It's not gonna hurt it. So who's this bike for? Uh, anybody from a beginner uh, who's looking for their entry level but gonna take them through for a long time as a trail bike all the way to a pretty advanced rider. And you know, one of the notes I made here, if you just wanna go further than you normally do, if you're a 15 mile average rider and you'd like to start doing some 25 mile days, do you know you don't have the horsepower yet? You buy a bike like this and now you do those 25 mile days. Pretty soon you'll be doing those 25 mile days on this and your analog bike if you have both. But it's gonna do that really well. You're gonna get a great workout. You're gonna have a lot of fun and you're still gonna be able to walk the next day to go to work. So there's that, that's pretty cool. People who want a lower weight e-bike, you're not, you don't wanna be 50 plus pounds downhill, just working your upper body. You don't wanna be tired and beat up. Um, you wanna have that mountain bike like feel with some assistance. Uh, this bike's for you. This bike's gonna fit you very, very well. It does all that stuff really well. And if 90% of your riding is just hanging with the friends, smashing the trails, having a good time, this bike just really shines. Um, if all your friends have full powered e-bikes and you buy this one, you're gonna need turbo a lot to keep up with them in trail, but uh, you know, you're probably gonna go faster downhill. I think this bike in a lot of ways is gonna be a more well-balanced bike and you're gonna be less tired from lucking that big bike down that hill. So, you know, I do think there's that about this bike that's really cool. All right, so about the wife one, I think, you know, I represent that earlier. Um, I, I'm not sure I'd buy one of these yet. I'm, I'm still a little torn about whether or not I'd want a full powered e-bike, the 50 pounds, something with more travel that I can jump and ride on the more technical stuff because I do like to ride that stuff. It's my favorite kind of riding when I'm in Tahoe. It's actually, I go hunt it out. And if I had an e-bike, I'd hunt even more of it out. And it's my, pref it's my preference for riding. Um, but for my wife, who's five one and a half and doesn't weigh a lot, she's got all her custom parts on, I'll do a walk around on her bike. I mean, I knew after just riding this bike for a couple weeks that does she need to be on this bike? The reach is short enough. My, she's not that tall. Her Yeti was always hard. You know, a 130 requires you to really be on the front end and she struggled with that. And it, it just, I started to understand, right? For her, we needed to get her away from that and back to a, a really well-designed trail bike. So we went out and bought her one. It's so awesome. And she went out and did a 25 mile ride right away. She smashed a, an entry level black diamond trail where it's got some black diamond features littered in, but mostly it's just a, a really advanced blue trail. Um, she cleared some rocks with a tree on the side that she, I don't know if she ever cleared it before. She either walked or hit the tree. She blew right by it without a thought, didn't even blink. Super cool. Her bike is only 37 pounds four ounces built up with pedals on it I'm gonna do a walk around and show you how that happens and uh, it wasn't, wasn't that hard to do we used parts that we had so um, pretty easy 
So if you're considering this as your e-bike and you're looking for a trail bike that's just awesome, boy, this should be high on your list. There's a couple other lightweight e-bikes out there now, but uh, boy, Specialized nailed it. This is a really good bike. I often don't get off of Specialized and think, man, I could easily own that bike and this bike I could own. I'm a little torn about whether or not I want a bike like this or a full-blown e-bike or I, I might have bought that medium that was sitting right next to the small for my wife. So I hope you guys really like this video. Please subscribe to the channel, like this video, uh, comment. Let me know what you think. What, what do you like? What do you don't like about the bike? Uh, do you agree with me about the Cascade Link? All that good stuff. I'm really interested in hearing more feedback on this bike. I'm just curious to learn more from you as you might have been as you were doing research to try to find more out about this bike. So hope you all really enjoyed this and I look forward to seeing you out on the trails.